Hey everybody, welcome to the SMA Journey 51 vlog. Okay guys, over the past month or so, I've been answering questions that you guys have been sending me in my email regarding Roche and Genentech's new potential treatment known as Rizdaplam. Rizdaplam is currently under FDA review, just like Biogen went through with Spinraza and Avexis went through with Zogensma to get it passed so that it could become a treatment for those of us with SMA. And we've heard that the potential decision from the FDA is going to be on or before May 24th of this year. Me personally, I think it's going to come long before then. But the questions that you guys have been asking me have been great questions. And I'm hoping the information that I'm giving you is information that you can share with not only your family, but your doctors. Because my goal is to give you the information that you can use regarding Rizdaplam to see if it's going to be a good treatment for you. Now, I'm going to answer a few more questions regarding Rizdaplam but these questions deal specifically with Roche and Genentech and our insurance companies. And I think these are questions that are going to have to be answered before the FDA makes their decision. So please watch the PowerPoint presentation that I put together for you. And then afterwards, I'll come back and I'll give you my final thoughts. Thank you. Questions for insurance companies and Roche and Genentech. Now the answers that I'm going to be giving are my opinions and my opinions only. Question. Will my insurance company pick up the cost of Rizdaplam if and when it's approved by the FDA? My opinion. Given the fact that insurance companies are paying for Spinraza and for Zolgensma, I do believe that most private and state-funded insurance companies will agree to cover the cost of Rizdaplam. Most insurance companies have had nearly two years to review data from Spinraza and nearly one year of data from Zolgensma, and I believe that they will see the benefits that Rizdaplam will have for those of us with SMA. Now, on a side note, if Rizdaplam is approved, Roche and Genentech will probably do the same thing that Biogen and Avexis did with regards to providing a list of insurance companies that have already agreed to pay for this treatment. Question, if approved by the FDA, will insurance companies allow a patient who is currently on Spinraza to take Rizdaplam at the same time? My opinion, my sources are telling me that insurance companies and medical professionals that are involved in making this decision have not yet decided as to whether or not a combination of Spinraza and Rizdaplam would be necessary and or even acceptable. This question will be determined during the approval process and will probably not be known until the FDA grants approval to Rizdaplam and writes the label. Once the FDA writes the label, they will then make the determination as to whether or not a combination therapy would be approved. If and when this happens, insurance companies will then make this decision as to whether or not they pay for both. Question. I'm interested in switching from Spinraza to Rizdaplam. If I switch to Rizdaplam and don't see any additional benefits to this treatment, will you allow me to switch back to Spinraza? My opinion. This would actually be a question for both the insurance company and for Roche and Genentech. Even though Rizdaplam will work similar to Spinraza because it works on the SMN2 gene, there may be steps that we have to take with regards to coming off of Spinraza, such as a time period that we may have to wait between our last Spinraza injection and our first dose of Rizdaplam. Question. Why does Spinraza have to be administered intrathecally? If Rizdaplam is approved by the FDA, this will be an oral treatment. Since they will both be working on the SMN2 gene, why does one have to be administered intrathecally and the other possible treatment can be delivered orally? My opinion. Spinraza is made up from an antisense oligonucleotide, otherwise known as an ASO. This ASO is a small synthetic or man-made molecule that cannot cross the blood-brain barrier. Since Spinraza cannot cross the blood-brain barrier, this is the reason why it has to be delivered directly to the central nervous system via an IT or intrathecal injection. The only thing that I can think of is that Rizdaplam will not have this synthetic man-made ASO. But until Roche and Genentech finishes going through the FDA approval process, the actual makeup of this treatment will not be known. Once it's approved, this question will be answered. Question. If Rizdaplam is approved by the FDA, 
Well, the same location that I'm getting my Spinraza treatments from offer the Rizdaplam treatment. My opinion, one of the biggest challenges that we faced when trying to get access to Spinraza was whether or not our insurance companies would pick up the cost of the treatment and where would the injection sites be located. I sent a message to my neurologist at UT Southwestern Medical Center in Dallas, Texas, and she told me that she believed that her location would be able to prescribe Rizdaplam if and when it's approved by the FDA. I'm sure that Roche and Genentech will provide a list of locations that will be able to prescribe this treatment. But the best thing to do would be to talk to your doctors and ask them if they know anything about Rizdaplam and the possibilities of them being able to prescribe it. Now, on a side note, there shouldn't be as much confusion as there was when Spinraza was approved regarding the different sites that should be able to prescribe this treatment if and when it's approved by the FDA. Spinraza became confusing because the injection sites had to meet certain stipulations, whereas Rizdaplam should be able to be prescribed by any board-certified neurologist or any primary care physician. Again, we won't know for certain as to the stipulations until the FDA makes their final judgment regarding Rizdaplam. Okay, so that concludes my PowerPoint presentation, and I hope you enjoyed it. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the PowerPoint presentation and I hope you got some information out of it that you can use as well. I've said this many times, that the goal behind my YouTube channel is to bring you the latest information regarding SMA, whether it be new potential treatments, or just information that I think might make your life a little bit better. And I hope you're enjoying the videos that I'm producing. If you enjoyed this week's video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I would greatly appreciate it. Remember, when you do subscribe to the channel, click on the bell icon. That way you'll be notified of any new videos that I produce. I hope all of you have had a fantastic week. Do me a favor, this upcoming week, do something for yourself that's going to make you a better person. God bless you, and I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Bye-bye.